Tell us your name and your qualifications for running for the Comanche Business Committee. First of all, I'm a full blood Comanche, and my name is Vincent Pokowatchit, and I've served on the Business Committee uh, once before, and uh, I served on the City Council in Fletcher, Oklahoma, and I got uh, re-elected as the first uh, Native American to be uh, on the City Council in Fletcher, and I also served as a uh, Parent Teachers Association President in Surreal, Oklahoma. So I believe that's enough. For, I believe I'm qualified to be a, a committee member of the Comanche Tribe. Very good. What are your thoughts about the tribal court system and how will you help establish it? Well, I would work with the committee to, to uh, get it. I believe the, court, the Comanches need a court system. Because the way our system is now, when we have uh, legal problems come up, we go to the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Bureau of Indian Affairs does not try to help us because they say it's an internal problem. And several years back, the Comanche tribe went to the Bureau and told them that they didn't want them intervening in our, intervening in our political system. So, more or less, I feel we're just a lame duck tribe and our tribal members and uh, our government, we have nowhere to turn. So I believe that uh, I'll do my best to work with whoever to get us a tribal court because I believe we need it. In addition to the tribal court, what changes, if any, do you want to make for the Comanche tribe? Well, one of the main changes I'd like to see, we always say that our young people are our future. We hear our tribal leaders say, the young people are our future. Well, the way, the way I feel about it is we do not help our kids enough in our education program. We do not help them enough at the beginning of the year, uh, financially, and our graduate students, we don't help them enough. And we always encourage our young people to get an education. But yet, I feel that we hold them back a little bit by not supporting them enough. That's my opinion about the court system. And I would work to try to get us to uh, do that part in our education system to better our tribe. With the recent tornadoes that devastated central Oklahoma, what do you think the Comanche Nation should do to help prepare tribal members, tribal property, and enhance the safety during such a disaster? Well, I feel that uh, I was speaking to half of the Comanche people, the homeowners. Uh, we have an emergency management program that I believe has about $70,000 in its account. And I believe that we should uh, turn that over to the our home improvement program and let him contract it out or uh, we put uh, three or four people on that job and put in storm shelters for our Native American, our Comanche people that live on tribal land and their homes are paid for. Uh, there's a lot of our Comanche people that don't have uh, storm shelters and if we have the money to do it, then we should do it. There's no excuse why we should deny our people storm shelters. Because look what happened at Moore, Oklahoma. In fact, we've had a, we have several Comanches that lived up there that lost their homes. And we don't want our people to be in harm's way and uh, be harmed with these storms. So that's something that I would add to our on that question. Recently the CBC was taken out of the employee appeal process here at the Comanche tribe. What are your thoughts about the CBC leaving and being taken out of the employee appeal process? Well, I sit on that appeals uh, process uh, once and uh, I believe that uh, it's best to leave the uh, the CBC out of it because and, and uh, get tribal members to sit on that appeals process because I think it's more just and more fair. 
And uh, that's my opinion of that. Recently, the Oklahoma governor, Mary Fallon, wants the Comanche Nation lands to adhere to a burn ban, which would impact traditional Comanche practices, such as sweat lodges and the Native American church services. Do you think she has the authority for this decision? Why or why not? Well, on that, I believe I'm 72 years old. And uh, I've seen that Native American church uh, all my life. When I was a young boy, they didn't call it Native American church. They called it Peyote meetings. Our religion was here in this country long before the Thibault came here. The Catholic Church, they drank wine, they break bread, and we're criticized for using a peel. Well, let me tell you young people something about the Native American Church. When I talk about our religion, excuse me, but I get kind of emotional. Thaapa, our Heavenly Father, told us to take this living being, the nearest thing to Him, which is the eagle, and use it to doctor our people. He also said, He could have said, we could have said, we're going to use a cottonwood tree leaf, for instance, the queen to smoke people, to run the evilness away. We could have used the oak tree, but God told our people, go use that cedar tree. It stands for everlasting life. And that's another thing that he gave it to, gave us to. And he also said, go get that cactus plant. It's going to have medicine. Use it to doctor the sick. And I said, we is in our, in our, when I was young, they called it peyote meetings. Now the younger generation changed it to a Native American church. We have a charter with the state of Oklahoma, a charter that was, that was done in 18, 1918 with the state of Oklahoma that they are not supposed to mess with our, our religion. And it is a religion. We do, not, we do not pray to a false god. We use that peyote and we pray to the peyote and that prayer bounces off from that peyote to God. Hatsunatami, our Heavenly Father. Nami Iyai, look after us. Nami Ruitun, help us. Tatatatami, we're just poor people. Ketatsunami Nasuwati, don't forget us. That's the way we use the Native, Church, Native American church for. It's not a false god we pray to. We pray to the god that everybody else prays to. So that's my opinion. I wish the governor of Oklahoma, bless her heart, I wish she would take into interest, take pity on us for our religion. Because that religion was here with our people before the white man even came here. And it's God given. It's not human given. The Indian didn't say, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But God said, I give this to you before the white man came here. It's just like the bark off of a tree. He said, go use that bark of the tree to heal the sick, to kill your infections. And today the white man calls it penicillin. The Indians used things long before the white man came here. And now they're using those same things items and giving it their own names. So that's my opinion of our Native American church, our peyote meeting. I'm 73 years old. I've always known it as peyote meeting. Nansuwakaiku is a good thing. Let me do it to it. It helps us. So Mary Fallon, leave our religion alone. Thank you. Is there anything else that you would like to add in closing? Well, you know, our people need a lot of help. I'm not going to sit here and say that I am going to try to get in office and solve all the problems. But I have some good ideas and changes 
And in order to make changes, there's going to have to be four of us on that committee to accomplish all any changes. I have compassion for our people, and I know there's a lot of young people out there that need help. And we need to show more compassion and more assistance to our old people. I believe they're been, being denied a lot of help. We have the opportunity to help our people. Years ago, we didn't have nothing. We were up, we were poor. We had no income. But now we have millions of dollars. And there's no reason why our people should do without. I feel that in our social services program, we need to put more money in our social services program to where we can help our people when they need help. We Indian people, we are not selfish people. We may have $800,000 today. In two weeks we may be broke because we have all of our not now. Our tadetta. We might eat to eat one. We help them all. We may be broke in a month. And then sometimes our leaders say, we can't help you because you got a lot of money. You don't qualify. You know, we all need help. Plus, I feel personally that our money that goes in, that the tribe makes, belongs to all Comanches. Not just the Comanches that live in, in our local area. Those Comanches that live out of state. You deserve the same help as the person living next door to the Comanche complex. Because you are a head count. There's 16,000 of us, and those 16,000 is the Comanche tribe. And those of you that live out of state, if you need help, if I get elected, I will do my best to assist you in whatever you need. Because you are our people. You are the head count. You are one of the 16,000. So we shouldn't say, you live out of state, we can't help you. Because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have a tribe. That's what I have to say on that problem. Thank you. Thank you for your time today, Mr. Pokalachita. You're welcome. Thank you. It's been an honor to be here. May Tafa Mari Iyai. Ara Mesena Kamechi people.